Hello, Dave the Sign Guy here, and today I'd like to talk about joining together three quarter inch plywood butt joints. What's a butt joint? I heard you ask. It's basically where you take one piece of wood, for example, again, three quarter inch birch grade plywood, and you butt it up to another piece of plywood, usually at a 90 degree angle. And what I really want to talk about is the two different methods in which I typically do this. Method number one is the straight up drill into the side, put your screw in, real simple and easy. And method number two, which has become very popular these days, is the pocket hole, where you have a jig that goes on the edge of the board, you pre-drill the hole, drop a screw in, tighten the two together, and you have another type of jump, uh, way of joining together a butt joint. Now, here's where I prefer this style, which is the direct screw-in style, over the pocket hole. And the pocket hole is a very good way to join two pieces of wood together. Um, however, there's a lot of pre-prep for it, mainly the setting up the jig and drilling all your holes and then um, putting everything together. And what I most dislike, most dislike about the pocket hole method is the fact that whenever you put that board in, and you may be able to see it here, there's always a bit of draw. So another tool you're always going to need is a square. Something to hold that in place, a, a clamping square of some sort. Whereas when you do just the direct screw, if you got your fingers lining the boards up, you're gonna come out pretty even every time, especially with a good quality birch 13 to 15 ply plywood such as this. So I prefer this method. Now I understand a lot of people don't like this method because well, you, you see the screw hole, but you do with the pocket hole too. It's just most people tend to hide it on the inside of cabinets. Now there's a cure for both of these. They make plugs for the pocket hole and you have to buy those separate and they can get expensive and glue them in. But what I like about these is I just buy a dowel, a quarter inch dowel, put a little glue in it, put it in and flush cut it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As you can see here, we have the little semi box we've made here and we've got the two uh, countersunk screws that we did here. And I probably could have countersunk them a hair more, but we're gonna go ahead and try and and do this technique I like to use with this. So first, we take a little wood glue and we dab it right in the hole. We're gonna dab it right into both holes. Then we simply take the dowel and I like to spin it around a little bit as best I can till I get it down into the hole. All right, and then you take a simple flush cut saw and you simply cut it off. It's easy. Is that once again we'll take like sometimes if it gets a little splinter you'll give it a little sanding but again just take your dowel push it far as you can get it down in there and with that wood glue over time once it glues dries it isn't going anywhere and that's it now then I just like to take a little bit of sandpaper sand it flush now here, what you gotta be careful of, and what some people do, and it's a good idea actually, is to put a little piece of tape before you cut. It just gives something for the saw itself to glide on. But as you can see, we now have nice wooden doweled, or at least a doweled look. Now, you might ask, why not just drive a quarter inch screw and run a dowel in it? And that's, that's a distinct possibility, and you can do that. But the mechanical, uh, 
strength that the screw gives is far better than just a wooden dowel. And not only that, when you're screwing, if you've countersunk your screw and you're driving that screw in, it's actually drawing the boards together even tighter than you could get it with just a dowel. So that's why I like to do this method because once I stain this it, it, or paint it, it's flush, you'll never see that. Where if you tried to fill this hole with putty or something, yes, that they, they I never like that look. This way you get a nice, clean, fresh look. If you got to do a little glazing on it to get it even better, that's fine. But again, it, it, it gives you a clean look. And not only that, you don't have holes on the inside. This is especially good if you're painting because now you've got a good clean surface inside and out that just looks like it's put together with just, just wood, like, like it's just glued only. By gluing and screwing this together, you increase the strength of this immensely. It doesn't take a screw every two, three inches. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I'm no more than between six and 12 inches apart with screws, depending on how big the piece is I'm making. So I just wanted to do a quick video and show you the two different methods I choose to use to butt joint uh, two boards together. Again, the flush mount screw with the wooden dowel or the pocket hole which has become very, very popular in the last few years. Good method. I just don't like the look here, but again, you can dowel it in. But one of the big drawbacks for me is the movement of the board as you're screwing it in. Because again, you're screwing at an angle. That screw is going in at about a 10 to 15 degree angle, and that angle causes board movement as you're tightening it up as where when you're doing a flush mount screw that's going straight into the board, the only draw is towards the board itself, not to the left or right. So that's why I prefer this method if I can get away with it. That was just a short little video to show you how I typically like to do butt joints. So uh, I appreciate you watching and please like and subscribe to this video. And uh, there'll be a few more to follow here in the coming days. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and this is Dave the Sign Guy signing off, and I'll talk to you real soon. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try this. Let's see if that happens to work a little smoother. Nice, that worked nice. All right, is it any faster or better?